Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming using Scala. In the last few videos we've worked on networking and we've built up a little uh, chat server. In this video I want to write some chat clients. Uh, so we were using Telnet as our chat server in the previous videos and that works just fine uh, but as I mentioned for example the newer versions of Windows don't seem to ship with a, an installed Telnet and so you might want to have uh, the ability to write your own chat client. It's really easy to do and it shows the side of writing client code uh, for doing socketing. So this is the code that we had for our chat server and we can come in here and let's go ahead and let's create a Scala object We'll give it a main. And let's first write the simple text chat client because it's the easier one to work with. So the idea here is we want to start off by having it connect to some machine. Um, because I'm going to be running this in Eclipse, I'm not going to use command line arguments. I actually that would probably be a good idea if you were intending to run this on command line, so it would work a lot like Telnet, where the first argument would be the machine to connect to, and the second argument would be the uh, uh, the port number. I'm not going to do that uh, because I intend to bring this up just down in the console, um, and actually to keep things simple, I'm going to go ahead and hard code these values. I could put in print lines and then read the values and whatnot, but I'm not even going to bother with that. Okay, so I have the host and the port, and then I need to make a socket. Now, this is something we haven't done previously. We haven't actually made our own socket manually. We have just used the one that was given to us by the accept method. That's how we got our sockets previously. But on the client side, we're not using a server socket, so we want to actually manually create our own socket. We just tell it what host and what port we want. And now we need to get the input streams and output streams from that. You know what? The types are going to be exactly like what they were over here. So we have an input stream, it's a buffered reader, uh, which allows us to very easily read full lines, and then an output stream uh, of a print stream. Okay, so at this point we're set up for for doing our our chat. Um, it might actually, I'm thinking about it, it might actually be nice to make it so that the user can do something like type in the uh, command of quit and, and terminate things. We'll see if we just actually want to add that in. Now the question is, what does this need to do? Well, it needs to have the ability to do a loop, and for now I'll go ahead and make it an infinite loop. We can come back and change that later if we decide to. And it is supposed to read input, so the user is supposed to uh, type something in, and then it's going to take what they type in and send it to the server. So, so we do a read line, and then we're just supposed to do os dot print line of that input. Technically, I don't even need to store it in a variable, but if we wanted to check for something like quit, then I could do that. Okay. Now. Kind of at the same time, we're also supposed to be looking for the server to uh, send data, and then we can, uh, and then it should print that to the screen. And th there we go again with this. It needs to happen at the same time. Okay, these things need to happen in parallel. I need to have, and part of the problem here is readline is a blocking call. Okay, readline actually stops and halts at this point. And what if the server sends us, you know, a whole bunch of data while we're waiting for the readline? Okay, so so we actually need to use a separate thread. You could get around this if you go into the the Scala console and you actually check for whether there is data available uh, to read. But 
it's probably a better idea to get into the habit of, of just multi-threading this out. So I'm going to go ahead and use the actor library again. to start something off in a thread and it's also going to have an infinite loop the way this is set up uh, and inside of this infinite loop I'm going to do a check uh, if let's see is dot ready remember that is the command to check if there's stuff for us to read on the buffered reader. If there's something for us to read, oops, that was not the command I wanted, then I will do a read line and do a print line of output and then we repeat. Okay. Very simple, very sweet. Uh, let's go ahead and run the server. Okay, so the server is running down here and now I'm going to um, run the client as well and it pops up what is your name because remember as soon as we connect to the server it sends that to us and so this loop here that's, that's reading for our output gets that and so I type in mark and then when I do hello, it prints that out for me. If we come over here, and we tell net in manually, okay, now we can see that we have both of these going, and they are able to chat to one another. Okay. On the telnet side, we can quit out there uh, and continues to chat. We have to manually stop it. What if I wanted to make this so that it could uh, stop in a more uh, elegant fashion? Well, <clears throat> we could do that. Let's just go ahead and make a Boolean flag and set it equal to true. And then I'm going to put a check inside of here if input is equal to quit, then flag equals false, else. And one of the nice things about doing this is that then I can close my socket at the end. Okay, Do a little bit of cleanup uh, for it. Another thing that I might like to do in this, remember this this ready, this check right here, this is actually going to use a lot of processing power and so I would feel better if I sleep my thread for a little bit. I don't need to check for input more than 10 times a second really and even if I take it to 100 times a second that's still uh, going to let the, the not use nearly as much processing power. Uh, right now this is just sitting here in this loop really fast doing are we there yet? are we there yet are we there yet are we there yet and we don't need to do that so we can put in a little bit of a sleep in there as well so as you'll notice the server is still over here running because I started it uh, and I haven't stopped it yet so we go ahead and reconnect our client this time I will connect as Bob and I get back that and now when I type in quit Notice it terminates and and everything's fine. Okay, so that was our text chat client. What about a GUI chat client? We'll make another application to do that. And at least to start off with, I am going to copy this code over. It's not going to be quite the same, but a lot of it is unchanged. And we'll do 
some importing. Okay, so the startup, uh, we have a, a host and a port, and once again, ideally we would be getting these from user input so they could connect to other machines, but, but that, that's easy for you to do and it uses things that you previously learned. We make the socket, we get the input stream, we get the output stream. Uh, flag equals true, maybe not so important for this particular program. And these two loops, at least the way that they work, is, is going to change. This one still needs to be checking to see if we got any input, but it needs to do something different. Okay, we need, first off, we need to have a GUI. So I'm gonna set up a frame. So we'll give it a title of chat. And the contents is going to be a border panel. again and I want to add two things to this so layout plus equals a how about the text area in the border panel dot position dot north uh, field and no actually I want this one to be in center and this one to be south. Okay, so text area and text field don't exist. Let's declare those. Okay, which is simple enough, val text field equals new text field. Import, uh, swing the Scala version here for both of those, okay. So, uh, this gives us a GUI, it's set up, everything's happy. When we read something from the server, what we should do is, uh, let's, well, I'll go ahead and leave the flag in there. Maybe, maybe we would wanna add a menu and have the ability to, to shut things down that way. Uh, when, I, when the server sends us something, we read it, but we're not print lining because the print line command is what we use for console. Instead, what we want to do is add this to our uh, text area. We're gonna append the output. Uh, just hit me another thing. Because this text area is going to get long, we should embed it in a new scroll pane. Import the Scala version. Okay. Um, so notice this is basically the same thing. Check if there's output, or check if there's a message from the server, read the message from the server, but now instead of printing it to screen, append it into the text area. And then sleep and do it all again. What about this side? So this side was inside of a loop and it was doing read line, but we don't read line in a GUI, and it turns out that we're just not going to do that at all. Okay. Uh, and I will have to get rid of the socket close down there. That, the input is now coming through this text field. Every time they edit the text field, we're going to, uh, to send that output to the server. Okay. So what I want to do here is make the text field listen to itself. And then listen to an event of the type edit done. Okay. So every time they are done editing, I want to uh, send a message to the server. So OS dot print line of text and then text is set to the empty string. Okay, let's see if that works. So that's the, I still have a server up, so we can run the GUI client. Whoops, I did not center it on screen, so in fact, I didn't set the size either. 
Oh, nor did I make it visible. Okay, let's go ahead. Center on screen. Size equals new dimension of, let's go with 400 by 600. And then after we've started that actor, let's open the frame. Okay, what is your name? Uh-oh. Okay, we got, oh, that's right, it doesn't respond to that. Hi there, this is a test. You can notice there is one problem with this. We're not getting new lines in here. And that problem So if yeah, if Jim said, "Oh, hey, there there's another problem." So if Jim says something, um testing Jim, that comes back and well, this is scrolled all the way over. We get that there. Uh When we do testing mark, okay, that actually comes out as a new line, but these appends, okay, so it's, it's significant to find out. The problem that we have is we're appending, but we're not appending with a new line. Um, the other problem that I have is every time that I lose focus here, it sends a message. Uh, so you can see things coming over here. You can see the, uh, the scroll bar changing. So how can we fix this? Actually, I'll leave Jim logged in. Um, need two things. First, I want the output plus a new line. That will give us the new lines that we wanted. And second, on the edit done, if text.nonempty. Basically, you're not allowed to uh, to enter an empty string in the GUI uh, because doing so causes the the problem that every time that you lose focus okay so let's bring back up this chat over here uh, oh I should set this so that it's not editable as well uh, And now if I run back and forth between these two, I don't have a problem. Uh, there are some other, because the edit done happens on loss of focus in the mid, and now I do this, you can see what happens. So there are some minor behavior issues that you, that we might want to work on. We might want it so it has to be on the enter key and not on the loss of focus for the edit done. But this is sufficient for, for our purposes right now. So this video has shown you how you can write some chat clients uh, that interface with our chat server. And if you are on a platform and you don't have access to Telnet uh, and you're doing projects that involve uh, the simple text networking, then you can copy one of these and use that as your client instead of Telnet. That's it for this video. We'll come back in the next one and we will talk about uh, a... Uh, We'll talk about how we can do URLs and some additional functionality of, of uh, sockets.